everybody, it's Tyler here at Greater Boston New England event, checking in with 1757 Wolverines, this team, New England district champions last year, looking for great results here as they actually have their first event in week four. Uh, so really, we'll talk a little bit about that too uh, for the Wolverines. Uh, overall, let's take a look at their robot. A lot of great stuff going into this. We'll be talking about uh, a lot of their decision-making process, uh, especially with their over-the-bumper intake, how this is all integrated. Uh, got a great elevator system we'll be talking about, going into their uh, shooter and their climber, and a little bit more in regards to how they're approaching vision and localization of the field. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Support Funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Len, let's start off talking about how you approach the Crescendo game when we were talking earlier. Uh, your team has a very balanced approach of like software and mechanical as well. So let's jump into that and we'll be talking more about your intake as well. Yeah. So at the beginning of the season, uh, we decided initially that we wanted to be able to pick up from the ground, score in the trap, ideally, and be able to shoot from long distances. And from that, we made the decisions to have our intake on this elevator here so that we can move it around. We have this shooter fixed down to the base, so it's nice and stable. Uh, and we have the intake here. So the intake uh, is on this big pivot here, which is on the shoot on the uh, elevator, sorry and it pivots out to the front to intake, so we can show that now. Yep, and then we hand up. And you can see we have a little bit of centering sequence in there. There's some sensors uh, down in the middle there. You probably can't see them from here, but right there, and then right down at the bottom. And using those, we can uh, center the note as it comes through because we have to avoid this axle and avoid the shooter. Uh, it's pretty compact, as you can see. But uh, yeah, we've had pretty good reliability. Uh, we're able to you know, get it down right in front of here, pick up notes and get them out of the way super fast. When we were talking earlier, you uh, mentioned that you're a really small team. And one of the things with that is that you're kind of a software first team in many times in regards to that decision making process. Can you just talk to me more about uh, what it's like kind of having a smaller team and going kind of more software first in regards to how you approach Crescendo and maybe how did it actually impact what your robot actually is? Absolutely. So yeah, so with the more software first approach, basically we simulate as much of the robot as we can ahead of time. And since we basically can't prototype very much because we don't have you know the manpower for it, uh, what we do is we pretty much perfect our design in CAD beforehand and perfect the software as much as we can and even tune uh, like the swerve drives, we actually tuned in software ahead of time. And with all of that, we can basically just build it all in one go, put it all together. And for the most part, it kind of just works. Um, so that's been our approach as, you know, kind of a small team, low manpower to, uh, you know, make sure that we can still be competitive in these events. And looking at your, uh, your intake here, maybe what challenges did you have in, in regards to trying to design or package or uh, test this? Yeah, so probably the biggest challenge with this intake, uh, designing it at least, was trying to get in the width of the bot here. So uh, we're 26 by 28 uh, with a little extra on the sides for bumper mounting. but. Basically what ended up happening is we knew we wanted a climber on this side and we wanted an elevator on this side. And so we just have this little space in the middle here to get everything for the intake, which means we have some uh, kind of crazy packaging going on. There's a little vortex in the back here. If you can't see that, that's what's powering it. Um, and yeah, it got definitely got interesting, but uh, putting that all together has obviously worked out and made it came up with some challenges, like when we pivot across, uh, if this node is too far down, it can actually bend over here. The motor can overpower it, but uh, what that means is it makes it more difficult to shoot. But using those sensors and some other code that we have written, it really helps us get around those issues. Let's continue following the note journey. Luke's gonna talk about your uh, shooter and elevator uh, as well. So uh, I love the elevator thing, you know, able to get above defenses is great, uh, but there's a lot more that really goes into this. So let's break it down. Sure, so since the elevator is on, um, it holds the intake pivot. For the most part, we're trying to make sure that a intake pivot is as secure as possible. That's why we also have the second hook here. But if we go into the amp state, um, the intake uh, moves up with the elevator and the sequencing is able to eject out the note. Um, very simple sequencing on that. Um, inside the elevator as well, we had some really tough packaging constraints, especially uh, with the, we wanted to be able to climb with the elevator, which meant we wanted to be continuously rigged as opposed to cascade rigging. And with continuous rigging, Ivan, if you can bring the elevator up and disable the bot. So inside um, 
of the uh, belt, we actually had a pretty difficult time getting some packaging in place. This was one of the few instances in which we had to prototype on the bot just to get the uh, rigging for the belt working properly. Um, but with that, it's been working out pretty reliably to it. The belts are actually internally rigged through it. So um, that's most of our amp sequencing. And because we wanted to have our shooter as a separate shooter so we can you know, guarantee its precision and accuracy because we didn't trust ourselves. This is our first time really building a good elevator. Um, we really didn't trust ourselves in the precision of that. So we wanted to put our shooter onto a separate mechanism. So if we can bring the elevator down, we'll do a, a simple shot here. Um, and then we can go into a, a sub, like a subwoofer shot. So we have three main types of shots, which are fixed shots. I, um, so we have a subwoofer and a podium shot fixed in place. And we also have a, a dynamic shot on the move. Um, so with those fixed shots, what we ensured was that these uh, front two rollers, because the note has to end up bending through uh, from the intake into the shooter, we wanted to make sure that we got the speed that we want at the ejecting velocity and also the angle that we want, which really pushed for um, two separate sides being controlled on the shooter uh, in order to induce a fixed amount of spin onto the note, and also um, two by two uh, in order to grab the note first with these wheels and then bring it up to speed to finally launch with the second set of wheels here. All right, well, let's talk about the uh, software that goes into this uh, shooting as well, too. What are you utilizing for uh, vision? How have you done your testing? And uh, walk me through, you know, looking at the playoffs as you guys are entering it, uh, any secret sauce that you're going to be implementing? Right, so going into this game, we knew that there were going to be a lot of able tags on the field, and we decided it would be pretty important knowing exactly where we are, especially with the stage being able to just, just blocking our vision all the time. So on each um, sword module, we have we have a camera for each, for each sword module. We have four cameras in total, and these are able to detect multiple able tags at once. So using where they are, um, given the set position, we are able to determine our own pose from vision. And then combining that with our uh, swerve odometry, we can basically weight that to get a, a greater sense of where we exactly are. And so now, since we have this um, pose of our robot, we're able to, uh, so for our autos especially, we are able to go to a specific path and align to that without with the um, vision in, with the vision correction. So it's always going on the correct path, even if we start off. And additionally, we use it to for auto alignment. So when we shoot, we can press this button, it, it automatically rotate to where, where it needs to be. And it also determines the distance between the robot and the speaker. So that will adjust the angle of the shooter. And do you get any feedback like on your driver station or anything like that in regards to uh, how your uh, vision is working? Oh yeah, so we also, we actually use Advantage Scope to, um, which shows us where a robot exactly is on the field. So we're, we're looking at one of the speaker tags on the red side, and as you can see, it's detecting that and going to that position. So part of this as well is we can actually visualize our shots on the field. So like if we didn't take a note right now. So like if. We do a fixed position shot. It actually visualizes the entire trajectory and the entire robot state through it. So this is really helpful for debugging potential shots. Like for instance, if we think it should be going a certain way, but it's not, we can look at what the robot thinks its uh, part is in combination with some match footage in order to determine really what the source of our errors are um, in software, uh, instead of being able to like mechanically uh, look at things. It's also been really helpful in simulation because uh, then we can ensure that the calculated shots that we have are equal to the shots that we expected to take. Looking at uh, this event, or uh, being that this is your first one week four, the future events, any uh, major changes or plans for uh, maybe DCMP or uh, this year, or I'm sorry, this uh, next event coming in? So yeah, one of the biggest improvements we need to make is that we actually need to finish our trap mechanism, which uh, and climb, which I'll talk about. We've come into this competition with like mechanically fully being able to do these, but we've been held back by like, since we've only just had the robot finished, we, we haven't actually been able to like finish the programming and everything and like kind of get around the quirks of it. So I guess I'll talk through um, the climbing mechanism now. So the climbing mechanism is pretty simple-ish. So first one is we have our elevator, which we've talked about before how it works. And um, do you want to put the intake out? It's kind of, yeah, if you want to come around here, you can see we have a, um, a hook here, and then we also have a hook here separately. So this hook, it's pretty self-explanatory. It it's on the elevator, it hooks on the thing, it comes down. And then, um, so the other challenge we had with creating a separate mechanism that parallels the elevator is bringing the, um, the chain low enough in our robot so we can actually get high enough to get trapped, to get the trap. Because 
with um, the elevator, it can bring it right down to the bottom. But with finding a solution that was like, we had to budget weight when finding a solution. So we decided to go on a telescoping arm because we knew how to do them. We've done them in past years. But one challenge we had with this is, how do we get it low enough in our robot? So with this, we see you have this uh, very wacky thing here, which basically just extends the hook down. We were very, I wouldn't say scared, but skeptical of this approach at first, because if you think about, think about all the forces here and possible, uh, maybe even snapping here, but we've come to, uh, you know, we, it's reinforced, it works well. And honestly, we haven't had problems with it yet. So and then next thing in our, in our uh, trap and climb is um, we had to bring the elevator back up to be able to shoot because intake here and our um, system attached to it. So we ended up developing these passive hooks on springs inside the robot if you want to come around and look. These are simple latching spring mechanisms where the chain would come down, push it back, and then when the chain comes in, it'll latch forward, which will end up freeing both of our climbers. And that will allow for then elevator to go back up and then eventually shoot trap. Well, 1757, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us more about your team and robot. You're uh, going to be entering playoffs here, so good luck as you go into that. And of course, continue your excellence from last year as New England District Champion. So we can't wait to see how you do. And uh, thanks for showcasing your robot. I got an awesome machine. No problem. Thank you. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.